So if you're new to GeoLayers, this tutorial is perfect for you. I specifically designed it to get you up and running quickly when creating your first map animation. I'm gonna take you through an entire project from start to finish. And if you like this tutorial, you might wanna check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. That's linked down in the video description. It's a really deep dive. It teaches you everything you would ever wanna know about GeoLayers 3 and creating map animations. So be sure to go check that out. And in fact, I'm actually running a sale on that right now. If you use coupon code Boone at checkout, you'll save $100. All right, on to the tutorial. So once you have GeoLayers 3 installed, you can go to Window and select Extensions and then just choose GeoLayers 3. That will open up the panel over here. And the first thing we wanna do is create a new map composition. So click on this button at the top, create map comp, and then down here you can specify all your parameters. I'm gonna change the resolution here, 1920 by 1080 standard HD, and I'm actually gonna bring the duration all the way down to five seconds, and I'm gonna change the name here to Austria because I'm gonna be doing an animation of the country of Austria. Now we wanna select our base map imagery. So I'm gonna go grab this one called Esri. If you click on it, and then click on it again, you can actually get to the style drop-down menu and choose from a variety of different options here. I'm gonna choose world imagery, which is this very beautiful satellite imagery. Uh, by the way, if you're doing some kind of commercial projects, um, there's a profile called Natural Earth that you'll wanna check out. This one is totally free. You can use it as you want in whatever projects you want. Okay, so now once you click create, that will set up your entire After Effects GeoLayers project. It's gonna look a little bit low resolution and you need to understand that the way GeoLayers works is it feeds you low resolution imagery for the map tiles just so that After Effects can handle the load and actually process everything quickly. When you have finished and completed your animation, you wanna do something called finalizing. So there's a big finalize button over here. If you click on this, this downloads all the high resolution tile imagery and now you can see it's looking much crispier over here. So you need to do that anytime you wanna render out because anytime you move your map composition, you'll need to refinalize. So over here in the GeoLayers panel, you have the map comp preview and this is where you can control your map. It's exactly like Google Maps. You can click and drag to move it around. You can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if you hold control or the scroll wheel or command, you can change the bearing and the pitch of your map. And then you have these navigation controls down here. You can reset the rotation, you have zoom, and then you also have the keyframe button to manually keyframe things. Okay, so we wanna create an, an animation of the country of Austria. So I'm gonna navigate over here to Austria and we wanna grab what's called a map feature. So if I go over to Austria here, I can actually double click on this and it's gonna show me some of the features. And this is called find features at coordinate. If I click on back, you can actually click on this little button right here, find features at coordinate and wherever your map comp view is centered over, it's gonna show you what features are there. And as I hover my mouse over, you can see we have different features here. We have the states and provinces as polygons. We have the country here, and then we have like just a random point data. I'm gonna grab the sovereign country here, and I'm gonna click on this little button here, add to browser. And that's gonna drop it down here in my browser. This is where I store all of my map features. Be aware that if you close After Effects, these will all go away and you have to download them again if you don't save them in your favorite features or export them as a GeoJSON. Okay, so if I double click on this, it'll perfectly zoom my map comp in here to Austria, but I can't really see it in my map here. So I wanna draw this out as a shape item. So to tell After Effects how you wanna draw it out, you need to go into the GeoLayers panel and click on this little icon right here. These are called layer styles, uh, shape layer styles. You have a bunch of default presets here. So I'm just gonna grab this white stroke. You have different presets. You have presets for point data, you have presets for lines, and you have presets for fills. Now, layer styles go way deep. You can do data-driven animations. I teach all of this in my masterclass. Um, and you can import Adobe Swatch Exchange files to give you all your custom looks and you can create new styles. It's really, really cool what you can do with these. But I'm just gonna grab this simple stroke here 
and then I'm gonna click on draw with my Austria feature selected. Down here you have the little pen icon, and then I'll draw this out. That is gonna draw this white stroke here, over here in my map comp. Now if you wanna change this, you can go to edit styles and it gives you all of your parameters here. So let's say I want the stroke to be a little bit smaller. I'll just bring the width of this down to two and then apply it. And now all I need to do is swap this out. So I grab the layer again here. And now with this style selected, there's this little swap icon. If you click on it, that'll swap it out with this, with this new layer style that I just edited. So now it's giving me a nice um, kind of a skinnier stroke here. I can also search features. So let's say I wanna get the city of Vienna as well. Up here you have this search bar. So if I type in the word Vienna, I get all of these different uh, features here. I'm gonna grab the state of Vienna and just add this to my browser. So now I have Vienna. Let's say I wanna label this right here. So I'm gonna add a label. Well, you have something called label templates right up here. So if you click on this drop down menu, these are some of the default label templates here. So I'm just gonna go with place top, select the map feature, and now down here, just to the left of the draw button, we have label, and I'll click on add label. And now you can't see it right now, and that's because there's animation applied to this. So if I just start to play this back, you'll see we now have this animation of our label. And now Vienna is labeled here. Now, by the way, maps can in geolayers in general can be very intensive on your system. So what you want to do is go to the window drop-down menu, select preview, and open up the preview panel. And I like to set my skip and resolution to really low, just so that when I play back, the system isn't um, you know being overloaded and it'll actually play back. But when you play back, it's going to look really jittery like this, really low res and really jittery. That's perfectly fine for a playback, but when we render it out, it's gonna look crispy crisp. Okay, so I've got a label here. Now I actually wanna label the country. Well, I can do this manually as well. I don't have to use label templates for everything. I could just go grab the text tool, click over here, and I'm just gonna to start to type in the word Austria. And let's just change this in the properties panel. And I'm gonna use the selection tool to kind of position this. Actually, let's bring it way down to 75. Now, there are two ways to attach this to the map. You can pin it or you can parent it. So if I go to the GeoLayers panel, there's a little pin icon right here, so I can pin this to the map. Or I can just grab this and grab the parent pick whip and parent this directly to the Austria Map Comp anchor. So basically, if you want anything to follow your map, you can simply parent it to this map comp anchor and then it will follow the map around. And if you want it to also move with the bearing and the pitch of the map, you need to set that layer to 3D and then it will move with the map. And you know what? I think I'm about ready to do an animation. So I want to fly into the country of Austria and I want to fly in probably from Europe. So what we can do is move the playhead to the beginning and I'm going to start to zoom out here. So I'm going to zoom out until I can see Europe roughly. That's looking good. And now what I can do is I can, I could obviously manually keyframe this, click on the keyframe button, and then manually move my playhead over, keyframe again and, and reposition the map. Or you can just simply use the map features. So I can grab this map feature, and down here you have fit view to feature. And you have a couple of different automation systems, these icons with keyframes. Right here you have animate view to feature. So that will keyframe your, your map from wherever your current map zoom is to that specific location. So it'll animate all the way in on Austria. So if I click on this, it will then ask me, how long should this animation take? I'm gonna put in three seconds. Now I can click on create animation. My playhead jumps over to the three second mark. And if I grab the Austria map comp and hit the U key, that'll bring up all my keyframes. And now you can see latitude, longitude, zoom, bearing, and pitch have all been keyframed, and now we actually have some movement here. So our label is animating on, and we're zooming in on the country. So we now have an animation. We have the outline of our country, we have two labels, and we have an animation. Okay, now I'm just gonna make some final tweaks and do one last big step here. So I'm gonna go to the beginning of this animation, and I'm gonna hold Control and click and drag to just change the bearing and the pitch on the map here so that it does a fly in, you know, that's a little bit more dynamic. So now if we play this back, it spins here. But now you can see we've got a new problem 
Well, first of all, the bearing and the pitch animations here, we only have keyframes for the beginning. So I'm going to come to the second group of keyframes here, and I'm just going to reset the rotation so that I'll reset the bearing and the pitch. And now we have a proper fly in here. But check out how our labels are reacting. So they're basically not rotating or scaling with the map. Our text is, but it's not rotating. So we need to make some adjustments to these labels. So first of all, our parented label is not rotating with the map. That's simply because it's not set to a 3D layer. So if I set that to 3D, now it will automatically kind of move with this map because it is parented. However, this label, when you draw out with label templates, those are basically pinned to the map. And when objects are pinned to the map, you can go to the effect controls panel and you'll see all of these customization options here. So pinning to a map really gives you a lot of customization options. For example, I can set this one to scale with the map if I want. So now it'll be that size that matches kind of this. If I want it to rotate with the map, I need to set it to 3D and then toggle on rotate with map. There we go. And I actually do not want it to do that. I do not need it to be 3D. However, I do want it to pop up right about here maybe, so right just before the two second mark. So for this, all I need to do is grab the label template and just drag it back here so that it animates on right here, and that's looking perfectly fine. Okay, so these labels are good to go. Our animation of the map view is good. Now I wanna animate on the stroke and this text. So right about the same location, I'll just trim back my text here and I will hit T for opacity, and I'll just do a quick opacity keyframe. So we'll just have this kind of fade on like this from zero to 100. And actually I'll probably do the same thing for our stroke right here. So I can just copy these opacity keyframes and then go over to our shape layer and paste that here. I can also trim this back. If I hit T for opacity, now you can see that comes up as well. Okay, so everything's animating on, but I want this particular country to stand out against the background. So if we do another little step here, we can really make this pop. And this is really gonna add a lot to our map and help it just really stand out. So what we can do here is we can use what's called an adjustment layer. So if I go to layer and select new adjustment layer, I can add effects to this adjustment layer and it will affect all of the layers underneath it. So for example, if I go to window and select effects and presets and come over here and grab something like hue saturation, I can just add this here to my adjustment layer. And if I start to bring down the saturation, you'll notice that it's desaturating everything. So if I drag it down below here, uh, actually you can't really tell if, I'm, if I drag down the lightness. As I move this adjustment layer, if I move it to the top, it's gonna to affect everything. If I move it below the labels, you'll see it's only affecting things that are below it. So how can we get it to separate the country? We wanna have just the country and then basically desaturate and turn down the lightness of just the background map, the map without the country. So for this, we just need to use what's called a track map. So we need to have this adjustment layer and set it to a mat that is just the shape of the country. So we can do this with these shape layers. So all I need to do is go back and actually I closed this project, so I lost my map features. I'll just search for Austria again. And now I'm gonna draw out Austria as a solid fill that has 100% opacity so that I can use it as a track mat. So I already have um, basically a fill selected here, and as long as it has 100% opacity, this thing will be perfect for a track map. And indeed it does, here we go, 100% opacity. So now I will just draw this out and I can actually rename this layer. So we'll go down here, just hit enter, and then I can call it Austria Matte. And I'll rename this one just so that we know what's going on here, I'll call it Austria Stroke. And now I'm gonna grab this adjustment layer and over here in the track mat column, I can do the parent pick whip and select the Austria Matte. Now, at first, what that's going to do is it's going to turn off the visibility of the matte layer, which is perfect. 
but it is applying the mat to the country. So all of the adjustment layer effects are being applied to just the country. And that is because this is applying it as an alpha mat. If I hover my cursor over this track mat column right here, you can see it says alpha mat selected. So you can toggle this from alpha to luma mat. So if I toggle this over, now it's a luma mat. We just want the alpha mat, but we actually need to invert it so that it's affecting everything aside from the actual country. So there we go. Now we've got a cool little setup here. And as long as I don't pull any layers under this, it's going to be ready to rock and roll. And I can add, um, you know, different effects to this. So I can change, you know, now we have total control over the background. I'll bring the, the brightness down a little bit. I'm going to finalize this to see what it looks like in high resolution. And I can also, you know, just add some more effects to this adjustment layer. Like if I want to add some blur, I can go grab a Gaussian blur, apply it to here. Now you can see we can start to blur out the background and really do whatever we want. So this really allows us to get a nice looking composite for our map and just pull our features out. And now I could even add text or whatever I want behind it. Or if I want to isolate it completely, you know, I can turn down the lightness totally. And then we have a totally isolated map. And now I want to animate this on. So I want when we start at the beginning, I don't want it to be um, this particular composite with the background all desaturated and with the lightness turned down. I want this effect to fade on. So for that, all I need to do is do a simple opacity animation to the adjustment layer. So I'm going to come over here and just go from 0 to 100. And then we can time this to that when this flies in and all these effects start coming on that this adjustment layer will fade on. And there you go. Now we've got a pretty darn uh, dynamic looking animation here. And you can go crazy with this. You can add drop shadows, uh, layer styles, inner glows. Once you pull the map off from the background and you separate these two with a track mat or with using multiple map comps, um, basically the design and stylization options are pretty unlimited. So I urge you to um, you know, give this a test and see what you can do with it. All right, now let's take a look at this render in full resolution. So to render this out, again, the last step is you finalize. And now you're going to grab this and you can go to composition and just select add to render queue. And you can grab one of these H.264 presets and then select an output location and then go ahead and render that out. Okay, so there you have it. I hope this was pretty straightforward and helped you get going inside of GeoLayers. Once again, if you enjoyed this and you really want to get into GeoLayers, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass, which is linked down in the video description. Again, I'm running a sale on that right now. If you use coupon code BOON, you're going to save some money at checkout. I also have a bundle. I have two courses, so if you want to get a discount on that, you can use the same promo code and save a little bit on that as well. And if you're a real map nut, you might want to check out my Patreon. I have uh, exclusive tutorials that I release every month. So have fun. Happy mapping. See you in the next one.